Today, we're gonna do some lighting technique. We're at Sable Studios today with Silas Roland and a few other people to help stand in for lighting. But we're gonna light this room, we're gonna light a interview, and we're going to do some creative lighting as well. So we're gonna go through different setups, different accents to add to your shot, to enhance it, and what you need just to do the bare minimum as well. So we're gonna be covering a lot today. Stick with us. This may be a multi-parter. Hey Silas, say hi. Uh, what's up? <laughs> yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself real quick. So I'm a filmmaker uh, here in upstate South Carolina. I mainly focus on cinematography and directing, screenwriting, and I'm trying to get away from editing because I'm, everybody's editing. And uh, yeah. I always say, and uh, yeah, that's like my, my thing that I always but say. But you are in control of cutting it out or keeping it? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I put the, the bloopers Man, in there. Uh, and, uh, shit. Oh, oh my weird. god. <laughs> From the back room of the studio, uh, this is kind of like an open space just to use for, just to use for different things. Uh, we're gonna do an interview lighting in here and maybe some creative lighting as well. But right now we've got a three point lighting going, so let's go through and break that down for you guys. Okay, so we've got uh, just this background light that's shining on the wall, giving it a little bit of a uh, vignette out, and I'll show you what the image looks like. We've got a hair light being diffused at the moment. Um, might change that a little bit, but that's just how it was already set up, so we use it that way. This is your fill light, and then you've got your main key light here. So this is a bicolored mono light. Uh, we've got them all set to daylight at the moment, but this is kind of how it looks here. And this is how it looks in the shot. Okay, so we're trying to set this light up and we just realized people will light things differently as you can expect. So there is no right way or wrong way to do this, just so you know. Uh, so Silas here, he likes low key. And that means a lot of shadows, crushed darks, uh, and then a more contrast. And I like high key where everything's kind of lifted and bright and cheery and happy. So, um, and, and for reference on that, like a typical style that I'll go for will, would be like the Ozarks is super low key, super almost borderline underexposed. And, and there are times where like, I like to stretch my highlights and have my highlights super blown out and my shadows super contrast and crunch, but for a typical interview, I go slightly underexposed, but and, and maybe brighten in post. But again, this is where it's a learning experience from Rhodes in terms of like lighting it super bright, super corporate, bouncing light, and hitting everywhere you can. So that came about because we're both we both use the C one hundred, and uh, we're looking at the scopes on it. And I use I usually shoot between fifty and seventy. Now I I know what they say, but I know what I shoot as well. Uh, the, I think they say skin tones around 40 or 50 around for proper exposure, but, um, that's not what I do. <laughs> I like bright scenes and he's shooting his, we can show you his scopes here. Right there, right below. I guess that's 50. Yeah. Um, but I didn't like throw it up, man. I'm, I'm not against throwing it up. I think that's where it was. No, I think it might've been at two, it might've been at the two eight mark, which I think is the prime time, uh, F stop. Are you rolling on there? I'm not. Can you? Yeah. So we have our key light and this is gonna be your main light. We can turn these other ones off and try to get a shot with just your key light. And that should be enough to get really moody, that um, low key shot that you're looking for. Yeah, and you could definitely throw a, a honeycomb grid on, on that soft box. To kill that to from the background. To kind of isolate and, yeah. and kill that fall off to where your background's extremely vignettes. Do you have a flag? Here. So, <clears throat> so I've just got a flag here and I'm just gonna cut the background a little bit so you can see how dark it can get. Yeah, and that's something right there that like obviously, it, again, it's moody, but it does stand out because you have that highlight against a dark background, which is awesome. But then we have the fill to kind of fill in this face, we don't really want it to be the same brightness as your key light. Uh, we just want it to, to be able to see that there's something happening over there. There's face over here, not just a big black shadow. But, no, but like, you are lighting the broadside right now, right? Yeah. So you this, this. Yeah, so this would be lighting the broadside, which is basically lighting what side your camera is on is would be your key. So that would be what that would is happening now if this was your key. Broadside is the side you get two thirds of the face 
facing the camera. The short side is one third of the face facing the camera, usually because they're looking slightly off camera, not directly at it. Um, so when he's looking angled off, so he has this looking room over here um, and he's positioned on the third, then we have this two thirds of his face is lit. And that's the broad side and then the short side. And the key always goes on the short side. I say always, but that's just the rule. You can change that however you feel. There's no exact rule to lighting, so. Yeah, there's definitely a parameter there that you can break in terms of like, if you are gonna, if you are gonna light your key from the broad side, then you're in certain, in most scenarios, you're gonna want your backlight to be darker so that there is that contrast there because you don't want your key filling in with your backlight. All right, so this is our hair light and this is, kind of hitting the background a little bit. You can, again, flag that off if you don't want it hitting the background. Um, but this is, as you can see, hitting the backside of him, his hair and his shoulders. Um, this can be you know, straight behind him or it can be a little bit above him. But the shot we're getting is the idea to hit right along here so that we have this line of light right across so that we can separate him from the background. Just as a keynote, your your key light is opposite your hair light because you got to think about, I guess, in fourths, really, you're qu you're creating that contrast. You're creating the contrast here and here, and you're creating highlights from here to here. And then you can shape the background to even stretch that more. And this is a prime example of why you should work with other people because they know more than you do. I did not know that. <laughs> now the background is actually a white wall, but it may look a little darker because of the way we have it lit. Uh, with white or gray, um, you can really kind of make that look black, gray, or white, depending on how you light it. Uh, and then the last light we have in the very back is just a background light, and that's just to cast a little light on the background. So you can see how it makes a vignette here. So there's a bright spot and then it gets darker as it falls out. And we do have a plant just in the background just to break it up a little bit. Uh, as many layers of videos you can have helps build a shape as well. So foreground, midground, background. Right now we've just got foreground and background uh, and that's usually what you get. But if you can throw some kind of foreground element in there, that's always a way to change it up a little bit. So this is our typical interview setup. And so each of these have a different purpose to show our subject, to separate the subject from the background or to fill in the background. Um, we're all lighting different things here. So we'll throw on the hair light, fill light, key light, and just kind of show them how it's stacked. So there's backlight, there's hair light, there's fill light, and then here's your key light. And then there's a beautiful, beautiful Michael right there. What we're working on right now, we, we went back in new actress here, but we changed some of the lighting um, just to kind of fix it up or improve it or th options you can do uh, to change it up. So let me walk you through that. It's actually the same actress and actor. We just redid their makeup and hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's, this is what lighting uh, can do for you. It can change this, your- <laughs> This is the lighting setup. <laughs> uh, we move the key light a little bit closer to our model and we also move the backlight, the uh, hair light in closer and got the diffusion off of it. So that makes this a larger source of light. And that's what we want. We want a large, soft source of light for all of these. I mean, as you see, we got diffusion on all of them, even though they're turned down a bit, like the sun with clouds is like your biggest diffuse source of light you can ever use. So people like diffuse days. And then we added a practical in the background with this lamp here. I think I'm, I'm in frame. Yeah, there we go. So we added a practical here just to kind of break up the background a little bit more. Uh, you can do this or you can have a plant. You don't have to do both. It's just to show some differences. But uh, now we have a little bit more balance with height, with light, with uh, depth, yeah, I, foreground, I, background. I would definitely add in that like having both does drive your your point of view directly down the middle to her. Yeah. And so she's what they right here. What we've got is a natural framing. So she's framed out with uh, these objects in the front. So she's, yeah, <laughs> that's compositional rules for photography, natural framing, um, but also contrast with light and dark. I'm getting my left and right so all mixed up, but the contrast with the bright and dark uh, is also a way to shape that. So if all this was black and she was lit, obviously you'd look at the brightest thing in the subject. So you don't want your practical. She's lit. Yeah, she's lit. 
You don't want your practical to be super bright because that's gonna pull attention away from your subject. Uh, and then last, we actually added this little light here to kind of cover up some of the shadows on the plant. So if I turn that around, you can see some of the shadows come back. So this just kind of kills it. Uh, but you can also use it as kind of a hair light to uh, light up the back of them. And it gives a little glow around there, a little halo effect. Uh, but we just have a light here hidden behind our subject and it does the job. And if anybody tells you that's wrong, slap them in the face with the light. Um, Tom, you can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> yeah, you can You can really do what you want, but I, I would definitely say like, start with the fundamentals, fundamental, gosh, I cannot speak English. Start with the fundamentals of the three point lighting. Once you start with that, you can build off of it and then kill it any way you want. Yeah, so you guys tell us what you think. Does this look good? Does, I mean, does, are you a short side person or do you care? Uh, leave comments down below and we'll have a discussion about it because personally I feel like there is not a correct way. You can do it however you feel best fits the scene and whatever makes you want to watch the video. So there are some rules to follow, but there you have it. All right, moving on to the next one. We've got both of our um, actors in the shot right now and you can change tons of things up with lighting. We're not going to go through all of that, but um, we did want to put them in the shot to show you uh, the clothing that is very important to how your scene is lit. So if they're all wearing white, this would be an atrocious shot to try to, to try to light because everything would just be light and bright. But um, we've got some good color. We've got some a jacket to help break up some of that look uh, as well. And then we've got some pops of color, but nothing that's going to be so overbearing that it's just distracting. Uh, you also want to watch out for kind of patterns, heavy patterns like stripes uh, that might give you a moray effect or like uh, plaid or something like that. But even tattoos are awesome to capture in because they add a lot of texture and color into your shot. <laughs> even it doesn't that apply for you guys as well or does it not? Us wearing white behind camera? Like if wearing bright colors behind camera, does it? I would say so. Anything that we can do to be a, a mute source is, you know, I mean, imagine shooting outside. This is the, the worst thing I hate is if you don't have uh, flags or anything, you have a lot of green bouncing up. So that's why that's why you black out even the, the grass behind you, because that green is going to add this texture that isn't wanted. So yeah, I mean, like I, I would not direct a film or I would not be behind the camera with a neon orange <laughs> shirt, like like a road worker, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, somebody been holding something and it, it's a bounce. I'm like, well, crap, they can't have it in the shot. Or I kind of like that, let's do it. So we changed things up, we're gonna do creative lighting. It's the same interview room, uh, but this can be used for your, there we go. This can be used for your YouTube room or studio space, or if you just wanna do some kind of creative spit lighting in your scene, uh, there's lots of movies that use this just to kind of show a difference in opinion if they can't really figure out who they are, if they're torn about a decision or something like that. You can do split lighting, something like this. Uh, and you can move lights around anywhere you want. So creative lighting, there's, I feel like, I don't know, do you think there's less rules with creative lighting? Because you can, it can be whatever it needs to be. I think it's a matter of understanding why you're going that direction, not just throwing light to throw light, but throwing light with motivation. Like right now, like this looks straight up out of John Wick, like I can just walk in there and slaughter you. Like, you're gonna be like, what, this guy's a hit man? So a lot of things you'll see with this kind of lighting is when you have daylight bulbs, or for it is daylight from a window, and you also have got some warm lights uh, inside a room. You've got a split lighting naturally from different color temperatures. So you can kind of take that and turn it up a little bit and then do it with different colors and stuff like that. I mean, experiment with your talent, like, Instead of directing them toward that way, they're this way, you know, they're they're staring off dramatically and you got this crazy split of light. That's actually really cool with the high contrast between a red face and a blue background. Yeah, or it's this way, you know, it's like that one bleeds in. Throw the much, but... th I'm spitting everywhere, but throw up the <laughs> throw up that and, and kind of see where it leads, you know. Like here, I'm like, I wouldn't even mess with me. I would not mess <laughs> with me under this lighting scenario. I would not I would not even touch it. Okay, so what we did is we took our two uh, RGB lights we had and just put them on the other side, change the colors, and you can change brightness or whatever as you need to. Uh, and then we've got a, another RGB um, aperture B7C or whatever. There you go, now you can see it. 
um, behind just casting some light on the wall as well. This is just some fun lighting. So we're gonna play around with this a little bit, maybe leave this rolling and we'll show you some time-lapse of some different shots we kind of come up with, all right? <laughs> okay, we're gonna do some haze. Awesome. What are we? Here we go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Can you get them both on there? Oh, you're really. Well, I'm letting the camera breathe, giving it a handheld vibe. Yeah. Oh. So this color light is catching the back of her in the front of him, and then opposite, you've got the other one catching the back of him in front of her, and then some color in the background. So I hope, like me, you guys learned something today. Uh, always work with other people. It's awesome. It's more fun. Uh, we were cracking up, having a great time, just playing with lights today. But if you did see anything that we should fix or try or anything, leave a comment down below. We're going to keep doing these types of videos uh, at the studio with Silas. He's not in frame, but he's right there. So definitely subscribe and follow along with us as we uh, carry on with some of these fun videos. Uh, and you guys need to help us with prompts. If you've got any ideas, we're up for trying it out. So, peace. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> you need to a lens flare. I just have to find my video. It actually worked. There we go. Peace. <laughs>